That's just a nice number. Let's see here. Okay. I'll go E4. E4, C5. Hmm. Knight F3. I think uh, there's one thing that we just haven't really played. Played a bunch of sidelines, you know, C3, but let's just play regular Sicilian and see which one he's going to go for. Um, okay. Takes, takes E5. Um, I don't know the most about this line, but, you know, this is the one where knight b5, d6, there's a little bit of theory here. Obviously, this square is pretty important, so black usually goes d6 to stop knight b6. Yeah, I was about to say, this line exists flipped for white. Where white goes like bishop c4, black goes knight d3 check, white goes king e2. So knight d6, king here is legitimately a move. It actually is. Seems crazy, but it's a move. Of course, he could take, but the line, as far as I know it, definitely involves king e7 or king e2 with white. So I thought maybe he was going to do that here. Obviously, because I'm playing white, I have the same position with an extra move. So that's kind of favorable. So he's not going to be able to castle without playing queen e7, which means we can probably expect queen e7. Um, knight c3 looks like, looks like the move. Guard that pawn, of course, of course. Yeah, so this makes sense. One thing I was thinking after queen e7 was, do we want to play knight b5? Uh, takes, is taken care of, we get the bishop pair. But I don't know if the bishop pair is that special, so I was thinking maybe just take. Queen c7 a move? Um, well, I the answer is no. I just know that it's not a move. Um, but in terms of explaining it, I would think that d5... Yeah, d5 already jumps out at me as maybe, maybe a good move. I don't know. Eh. You know, takes, takes. Maybe getting d5 is good for black. I'm not sure. It opens the positions for the two bishops. Queen c7, I'm also wondering, like, I think your idea is if d6, then 
knight b5, right? Because then, oh, if you take, this guy happens, and also knight d6 is a threat. But after d6, knight b5, is knight e4 just playable? My knight could get attacked, but then I'm going to attack your knight. Just, it turns into a whole mess there. I'm just not really sure what the hell happens. But I can say from my experience seeing these kind of positions, this is just not, it's not really a move. It's not really a move. Basically venturing too far into enemy territory and you're not really going to achieve what you want to. Like black is going to get to play d6 or d5. So it looks, I would say it looks better than it actually executes. Can't wait to turn on the engine and queen c7 as the best move. I think I'm probably just going to take. Knight b5, I was thinking, you know, if knight e4, there's knight c7. And um, then I can trade and take. But knight b5, I mean, even just takes, takes, king e7 is probably okay. The question is, after I take, what am I actually looking to do there? Bishop here kind of threatens knight there. So I'm going to take, if king takes, I'm going to go bishop there and, and castle. So I, as expected, knight takes. So after knight takes, knight b5, castles, knight d6. That looks very good. Because then my pawn's protected. D5 is prevented. That looks really good, actually. So I'm, I'm actually a big fan of knight B5 here. I think this is very good. That's a huge threat. You can play king D8. I'll defend this, F3 or something. Even if you get D5, I don't think it works. So castles... And I know it's it's very like greedy because I'm doing this all with one piece before I've even done anything else, but I'm really sold on this idea. This is protected. The pawn is stopped. This knight, the knights can't move anywhere because of this pawn. I think this is a, potentially a vice grip type of position. Still, nothing is getting rid of my knight unless it's that move, knight e8. Um, knight here and knight here, I need to be able to castle, so I think it's time to move my bishop. I could go bishop here. Or c3. c3 is a completely normal move. Hmm. So if I move my bishop, let's say black somehow is able to play knight here, I castle and I'm in a great spot. What's annoying to me is if I move my bishop and knight b4 happens, if I castle, I lose this pawn. Now, I just don't really know if that's like, as, I don't know if it's actually a big deal. Maybe I could sack it. But it seems unnecessary to sacrifice. Hmm. Yeah, C3 is looking better and better. 
The thing about C3, which sucks, is I'm not actually developing a piece. So if he goes here, takes, takes. I feel like I could be doing better. One thing I don't like is C3. Here, let's say takes, takes. Bishop E3, D6, long castle, rook D8. He's defending that. He's going to bring the king. I'm trying to keep this pawn on d7 the whole game if I can. That's my goal, truly. Hmm. Tough. Okay. I've settled on this. I've settled on this. Bishop D2 I was thinking about, Spencer. I, I really was. Settled on bishop g5. Um, if knight b4, I think I don't mind playing king here. But yeah, I was expecting knight e8 because he's going to evict my knight, and c3 just seemed too slow. So now, I think it's basically mandatory. We need to do this. <laughs> bishop e7 would be nice if I didn't lose a piece. But one of the ideas of playing this move was that if the knight moved, there were a lot of lines where it ended up there. So, takes, takes. I want to play moves like f3, um, probably bishop out, and double the rooks as soon as possible to stay locked in on that d6 square. Because he's not going to be able to move this, and he's probably not going to be able to develop the bishop even to those squares because he's going to need to defend the d7 pawn. So f6, bishop c4 check, looks very good. If he moves the knight, bishop e7 looks very good. And technically, knight takes c8 and rook takes d7 is playable. So yeah. This is that move, knight d4, that I was kind of waiting for. Um, I'll point out one thing. Bishop e7, knight takes d6, bishop takes f8, knight takes e4, threatens this, and my bishop's attacked. So I don't feel great about that. But bishop e7 takes, bishop takes d6, rook e8, maybe bishop takes e5. That will win a pawn. Plus, I don't even have to take this. Maybe I just kick the knight out and keep the pieces uh, at bay. So obviously, bishop e7 is like the, the move here. Yeah, bishop e7 is the move. Um, c3, though, it's a pretty good move as well. Okay, so here's the situation. Bishop e7 takes, bishop takes rook e8, bishop takes e5, wins a pawn. It cleanly wins a pawn, from what I can see. Or he doesn't take it and I put the bishop back on d6. Either way, good for me. If I want to try to keep the boa constrictorness of the position i could just play c3 there and not take this either way i think bishop e7 is the move definitely knight takes bishop takes is wrong so we have to take this 
Bishop takes f8, and knight takes e4, I don't like. And now, it's just an important question. Do I take this and maybe win a pawn? Or is leaving my bishop here and having his pieces unable to move so worth it that I don't even want to win a pawn? And I just play, let's say, c3. Personally, I think it's time to, to take this. But it's, it's a close call. One thing is if knight c2, I can just save my bishop, and then the knight's just trapped. So we'll do this. And yeah, I was basically thinking exactly that, uh, realty money, that even though I don't have the pawn like firmly blockaded, it's not really the most mobile, the most mobile pawn. Same colored bishops, so not, not really tremendous drawing chances for my opponent. If bishop here will always have rook takes pawn. Uh, if rook here, I think bishop here can be played. I think I have to play this or this. F3 is interesting because then that's like me saying you can't move your bishop. Because of that. Bishop d3. He wants to do the same thing, but bishop d3 prepares f4. Yeah, it's a great point, Santo. Um, I mean, bishop c4 plans to go there and do this. It's kind of this and this combined into one move. f3 is a really good move here. But bishop c4, you can't do that because of this. So if you can't move the bishop, this is, this is better because bishop d3 blocks the two rooks. Obviously, you don't want to do that if you can avoid it. So black can't move this pawn, can't move this bishop. Not much for black to do here. I'm gonna hit them with f4, rook to d1. And this move also stops f5 and b5. Yep, I'm a big fan of this position here. Tough for black to make any moves, really. I, I think maybe king to the middle might be the best. I, I believe that. Okay. Okay. So I think we just renew the, the threat here. So still can't move the bishop. Yeah, as soon as you move the bishop, I just grab the d7 pawn and there'll be enough threats there. Okay, he still can't move the bishop, but what he could do is play b5 next. Maybe he's thinking of that. Bishop b5 myself is an idea. Um, he would literally have to play, I think, rook b7 there. Yeah, but then bishop a6. I'm going to go here. Trying to take this um, because I don't see any way you can stop it. And the thing is, even if I take this and black takes here, 
Not only is a seven maybe a possibility to take, but I can go rook d8, rook e8, trade rooks, completely winning in the end game. And rook b7, which I was noticing as a defensive move, there's bishop a6, and I can trade the bishops and then take here all the same. I think it works out the same way. Bishop a6. Let's take. And again, I could go f3, but I think rook d7 is, is a killer move here. Of course, takes here, there's no point discussing. Um, just dead lost. In order for black to struggle, the move is rook e4. You're not getting mated because of rook e8. But there's an important concept that's about to be on display <coughs> in this rook end game, which is that um, my opponent will not have any time. Eh. Uh, my opponent won't have any time to make any threats. So yeah, if rook e4, rook takes a7, rook e2 gives really good counterplay. So my plan after rook e4 was rook d8 check. Can't take it, so rook back to e8. Then I would trade this rook, the rook would take back, and the other rook goes to d7. The problem is there's only two open files. My king just goes to d2, and you can't use either of them. Meanwhile, my rook's attacking this. It's going to go here and attack this. The pawns are going to have to be defended by the rook. The rook's like on the seventh rank. And you're down a pawn, it's a disaster endgame. So my opponent didn't even take the pawn, probably thought he was getting mated with rook d8. But what I'm saying is that this endgame would be completely winning. If you take this pawn, you throw it off the board. The fact that it's on e4 obviously makes it a lot easier. But this is exactly the position you want to avoid as black. To illustrate, I'm going to play rook b7, and you'll notice the king stuck to that pawn, the rook stuck to that pawn, the pawn stuck to that pawn, and this pawn can't move. So absolutely zero pieces can move here. Which is, yeah, it's just uh, unpleasant. If we go e5, he can't even play there because of e6. This, like, this is just uh, the nastiest. Yeah, so now the king, now it's really bad, right? King stuck to the pawn. King can't move there. The king can only go here and here because it has to stay attached to that pawn. Yeah, now it's getting, uh, it's getting rough. He's going to slowly realize, like, you know, he just doesn't have many moves with his pieces. I think I can just connect all the pawns here. He doesn't have any moves. Nothing can, yeah, nothing can move. So I'm going to slowly make all the improving moves in the position. Just a, a painful defensive task. Okay, so he did it. Obviously, I was waiting for that to play e6. But he realized that he may as well try it because, like, literally sitting there and shuffling the king is <laughs> only bad things are going to happen. Because I'm up a pawn and soon to be up two pawns, um, I can take this and take this, but 
I think what I'm going to do is take here so that I tie some of his pieces down. Like his rook is now tied to that. And if he ever takes me, well, well this doesn't even need calculating because we're up so many pawns. So. Yeah, but you can't go that way because now I just go like this. GG. Something like what I was talking about was uh, a little bit later. So I was saying like, okay, black needs to take here. And then rook takes a7, although playable, to me offers way too much counterplay. Rook e2, rook d2, this will be a draw. I can go rook c7, but there's counterplay for black no matter what. It's unnecessary. I was going to go rook d8. This is a checkmate, obviously, but you don't have to fall into it. You can go here. And then I was just going to trade. Go rook d7. Or king can come to d2. And this is, it's too painful here. So I was expecting to have the exact thing that we had in the game, but I was expecting to have it without my e pawn. Having the e pawn on the board is just 10 times better. So then I thought we would have this position. Because if you go a5 and go here, and if you defend it, you get mated. So the game ends. You have to go here. And then rook b7, and now everything is stuck. And then we would get the exact same thing as the game, right? Except everything is stuck. I don't have an e pawn, so it's a little bit more work. But same concept, same idea. So letting me have the e pawn just black can barely move here. He doesn't play king g7. I mean, what is he going to do, right? He's literally shuffling on these three squares the whole game. I'll play b3, c4, <laughs> you know. If you walk up here, I can do whatever I want at this point. GG. How did our game review look? We had a brilliancy. What do you think our brilliancy was? I had a brilliancy? Bishop takes e5? That's a soft brilliancy. No, wait, we got to give Queen C7 some shine here. Realty money, here it is. <laughs> um, Queen C7, let's see. Oh, black is better. Oops. Yeah, it's just that uh, it's just unnecessary. Too fancy. May as well uh, just stay blocking the pawn. Yeah, here knight b5 is, uh, I thought it was a crazy good move. Um, so I was a big fan of knight b5. Yeah, quickly realized this knight b5 is like very good. Okay, it not liking knight d6 is criminal. I know knight d6 is not necessary, but man, it feels good. Wow, that's our brilliancy. A little bit soft. Feels good, man. I'll always take a, a teal colored double exclamation mark move. The uh, sweet hit of endorphins.
Oh, this is how the game could have ended. Thank you, chess.com. GG.